everybody and welcome to a new episode of Diagnose Dan. Today we're working on this 2000 Toyota Previa minivan with a 2.4 liter engine. And this engine has got some serious issues. It's not revving, it's stalling, it's backfiring. But what if you've got a car and you've got no fault codes to lead you? For instance, somebody's been in there before and erased all the fault codes. Can we still diagnose this car using, for instance, the data? Well, we can. So let's diagnose this together. Now, first of all, let's start this engine up and see what it's doing. Starting it up and flooring it right now. As you can see, it's not revving. Let's try again. No guys, it's got some serious issues. It's not revving. So let's find out what's wrong. So let's go through the data pits of this engine and see if there's anything standing out that can help us. I'm in generic mode right now. That means OBD2. And the first thing I noticed, and this is in Dutch, but I will translate for you guys, is that fuel system bank one is in closed loop and fuel system bank two is in open loop. Um, the engine is warmed up. It's at 91 degrees centigrade right now. Um, although this is only a four cylinder engine, it's divided into two banks. Um, there's an O2 sensor for cylinder one and two, that's bank one. And there's an O2 sensor for cylinder three and four, which is bank two. Uh, closed loop means that the uh, computer is controlling the mixture. And on bank one, it is. And on bank two, it is not right now. So let's see if there's anything else standing out. Uh, this is short term fuel trim bank one minus 15%. That means the computer is taking away 15% of fuel. So there is a rich mixture and the computer is trying to compensate for this. So it is controlling bank one. And as we can see, short term fuel trim bank two, the computer is doing nothing. We already saw that because uh, the computer was at open loop at bank two. Um, although this is an older car, it has already got uh, wideband uh, wide O2 sensors. And in the data pit, it gives us a ratio. And this is very convenient because we can exactly see what the lambda uh, value is. Uh, one would be stoichiometric and everything above one is a lean mixture and everything beneath one is a rich mixture. So on uh, bank one, um, it's one right now, which means a perfect mixture. And on bank two, it's also one. So let's rev the engine up a little bit and let's see if the numbers are changing. Well, on bank one, it's going very lean right now. Lambda 1.2, that means a lean mixture. And on bank two, nothing is happening. So what I think guys, is that bank two is not going into closed loop because that uh, number one O2 sensor is not functioning. So let's check this out first. Now what we're trying to do is to diagnose this engine without using the fault codes, just using the data. So what my suspicion is, there's something wrong with one of the two upstream O2 sensors causing one of the two banks not to go into closed loop. Um, to be certain, we need to check the upstream O2 sensors. There are a lot of ways to check these sensors and um, one of the uh, tests I like to do is to check the uh, heater circuit inside the O2 sensor 
just because it is super easy and super quick and uh, it tells us a lot. So what we need to do is to disconnect both upstream O2 sensors and usually the heater circuit are uh, two colors, uh, two colors of the same kind. So in this case there are two black wires and for the O2 sensors to heat up current needs to flow through the sensor. So uh, the sensor cannot be open. So to check this we need our uh, multimeter on continuity on ohms and uh, check the continuity of the heater circuit inside of the uh, O2 sensor and this sensor there is continuity so this heater sensor uh, heater circuit inside the sensor is okay and this sensor let's check again and inside this sensor there is an open so current cannot flow through the sensor so the uh, sensor won't heat up properly um, and it won't function properly and that's probably causing one of the banks not to go into closed loop so uh, we need to change out this upstream O2 sensor and see if both banks will go into closed loop now back at our data list and with the uh, bad upstream O2 sensor replaced both uh, banks went in closed loop very fast our engine however is still not revving and uh, I was expecting this I think we've got another problem but I wanted to use the fuel trims to diagnose our problem and without the engine going into closed loop we cannot use the fuel trims so um, you can see now both on bank 2 and on bank 1 both fuel trims are controlled so let's customize this list and continue our diagnosis I customized the data list and on top we've got the engine RPM and underneath we got our short term fuel trims of bank 1 and bank 2 and the engine is idling right now and it's idle it's pretty happy fuel trims looking good so let's try to rev up the engine and see what the short term fuel trims are doing so uh, let's rev the engine You see the fuel trim going way positive. What just happened is when I ref the engines, these are the RPMs, um, the fuel trims went way positive, positive 20%. That means the computer is trying to compensate for a lean condition. The mixture was very lean and the computer is compensating by adding 20% more fuel and only when the RPMs are higher so in high RPMs the mixture is becoming lean so let's watch again RPM, positive fuel trims, computer compensating for lean condition. Let's try one final time. High RPM, high positive fuel trims, computer compensating injecting 20% extra fuel trying to compensate 
for lean condition. So what we know from the data right now is that we've got a very lean condition at higher RPM. Could this be caused by an air leak? Well, I don't think so. Because an air leak would cause the uh, fuel trims being worse at idle and get better at higher RPM. So uh, what could cause this? Well, I've got two main suspects right now. A being the fuel pressure and B being the mass airflow sensor. The next thing I want to do is to check the mass airflow sensor and it's way in the back over here and I've got the signal wire back probe so let's see what the waveform looks like um, I've got the scope connected to the signal wire of the mass airflow sensor what we would like to see typical on uh, this type of sensor is the signal coming close to 5 volts on full throttle so uh, I'm gonna hit the throttle next and uh, you guys watch the scope the red line over here if it's gonna come close to the 5 volt mark line over here so uh, I'm gonna hit the throttle right now and the signal coming up um, let's pause it for a moment and analyze the signal so this is the recorded waveform of our uh, mass airflow signal and over here I hit full throttle and it should have come close to the 5 volt line over here and as you can see it did not so let's see what the highest voltage actually was and it was over here and the voltage was at the highest point 2.7 volts so uh, that's not nearly enough that's about half what it should be so uh, let's take a closer look at this mass airflow sensor well this is our actual mass airflow meter and there's a little hot wire inside and I want to use this tiny camera to show you guys what it looks like and I hope you guys can see this but it's very very dirty so I'm uh, gonna take a little cleaning agent a little pick and some patience and I will try to clean it and see if we can save it so I uh, tried to clean the mass airflow meter to the best of my ability and this is the result a very very clean hot wire so what we're gonna do we're gonna reinstall it and scope it again and see if it got any better okay I uh, reinstalled the cleaned mass airflow sensor uh, back probe the signal wire again uh, this is the live value right now I'm gonna hit full throttle again and let's see if we're getting closer to the target this time okay signal coming up let's uh, pause the scope and analyze the waveform this is the recorded waveform 
of our uh, airflow sensor signal and you can see right away it almost reached our mark so uh, it's a lot better than before so uh, let's take a look at our fuel trims right now the first thing I noticed inside the car is that the car is revving again no problems there let's take a look at our fuel trims over here let's hit the throttle you see the RPM going up but the fuel trim not following let's hit the throttle again RPM going up fuel trim not following again RPM going up fuel trim not following so the uh, computer is not compensating for a lean or rich mixture anymore so uh, I think we've got a fix so we did it we fixed the car without using the fault codes fault codes can lead you into a good direction but they can also lead you into a false direction a lot of times when cars come into my shop another mechanic has already looked at it and they pull plugs or hoses or connectors and uh, created fault codes that weren't there in the beginning so always keep watching your data if you want to learn more about fuel trims about waveforms, about scopes, about fixing cars, please subscribe to my channel and you will get a notification each time I post a new video. See you next time guys and uh, diagnose then, fix it again. Bye guys.